Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. I found Good girl. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and, get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway... There was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. Hey, this is really good! Rose. Yes? My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry? She doesn't have anything. Yeah, uh, hey Al? Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? What? It's coming for you. 
hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. Turn the light on. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. She got my books. And a mural to me. Creepy. Rose took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. <laughs> You're right. I deserve more money. I'm so handsome. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. A nice day. Come back soon. Yeah, kind of like how everybody else was repeating random junk when they were taken. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. You know, I get people like wanting to help out, but I don't know. It's one of those things is like if it's not if you're not involved with it and you don't have any signs of like things going in a way that need help. Keep your fucking business out of it. That, that kind of shit, that always pisses me off. Well, I had an incident where somebody had done that to me. That's what pisses me off about it. Getting to, like, somebody ran into my car, and we were going to let it all go. Because it wasn't much damage to my car, and he was on his fucking way. And some other bitch calls the fucking cops. And it's like, oh, well, I already called the cops. Like, stay the fuck out of it. It's not your fucking business. Why do you got to call the cops? It's stupid. I do not like when people butt into shit that is not their business. Now, if he had heard, like, things that didn't sound right or he was worried about things, that's different. But it doesn't say that. So I'm making the assumption this dude's an asshole. One of those guys that butts into other people's fucking business. <clears throat> or maybe I'm just cynical and... I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you... The weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> Is it just me? 
Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I am the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Something like that, Walt. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, he let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man, and there's something in the air tonight, man. Uh, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I, I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, well uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? How can I be sure? This weather's something else. It's just foggy. I don't... Unless it's the heavy fog that's just, like, holding them down. It's like, uh, I don't fucking like fog. Fuck this, man. Too heavy out of here. Oh, you're gonna get it now. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Nicole. I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Pretty sure it's illegal to fire on an unarmed man. Like they just instant spot. Yeah, like I'm literally in the woods. I haven't fired on them. Made no aggressive moves. I'm gonna have all their fucking badges. Y'all go here for my lawyer. I'm going to sue this whole town. Fuck all of y'all. Shooting an unarmed writer. I ain't even got a gun. I ain't got a flashlight. I didn't even give you the bird. I on, didn't do shit. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. 
The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the rider on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Like, fuckers didn't read me my rights. I don't know if that's part of it. They didn't do none of that. Just said, you're under arrest. I don't know why. Didn't show a warrant. See? Okay, I'm a fugitive. The suspect was last sighted oh. running along the gorge that leads westward from the trailer park. All units are advised that the suspect may be armed. Approach with caution. James out. I'm a fugitive. But he didn't tell me what I'd done wrong. I still don't think you can fire on somebody just for running. Rose didn't know how the strange old lady got in her trailer, and she looked wrong somehow. The woman showed her teeth in an approximation of a smile and traced a finger down Rose's cheek. Pretty girl, she said. Rose felt as if she was falling asleep, but her knees didn't buckle. The crone spoke in a whisper, her words ice cold and dark in Rose's ear. I'm not getting into politics. It's bullshit. That's all I'm gonna say. Cops shouldn't be firing at me for no reason. Uh, you get what this you deserve. horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Are you? Oh, he doesn't consider himself a monster. She's sharp. Gotta cover books, you know. <gasps> you 
Darkness doesn't fight me. Apparently, the FBI agent is a drunk. I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. It does stay a radio station. These are like not the tallest fire stations. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. Maybe they just didn't want to make them too tall so you're not like running up flights and flights of fucking like, stairs. It took me a moment to recognize the flash of grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation.
Now, what happened to that weird energizer bat like flashlight I got at the beginning of the game? Like, it's just been all mag lights since then. Well, what looks like a mag light? Oh, Felicia. <laughs> Well, can I hold on to the flashbangs? Eh. Worth. Maybe. Probably not. Oh, what? You just appeared! Ah! Bullshit! Bullshit. That one dude literally appeared in front of me. Come on now. Oh, now you will read me my rights, but just run, cow! What? Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. Nope. I tried to dodge it. By the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true. She would be Alan Wake's muse. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Deep down inside, she was screaming in terror. Ugh. That's a that's gotta be a terrible feeling to be like 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 a like a jokes or joker tuck, some kind of shit. Oh, oh. I'm terrified, but I'm smiling. Nah, I'm good. Fuck that noise. Oh, lordy, lordy. Ooh, fuck off! I don't know where they're coming from. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you.
hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. In, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. No way to run now, Dan Brown. You got it away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. I had fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. Don't get me a flare. Don't flare on her. Nine of these fuckers. Fuck you. A man on a mountain. Call me. Ugh. It does bother me a little bit when games don't put details on the. Well, maybe it's just because it's a really bright night. I don't know. But. It's literally just like a glowing ball in the sky. I don't like that. This is following me. I said, I'm gonna come and get your booty. Chief. 
what have we got here? I got some flares. Danny had stepped out, but what stumbled back in was something else. Something alien. A monster. Walter tried to kill it. First with his fists, then a chair. It wouldn't die. Instead, it kept coming, unaffected by the beating it had taken. After Walter managed to kick it down the cellar stairs, fear took over. He ran, got behind the wheel, gunned the engine. The booze wouldn't make him forget, but he knew he had to try. Danny! Oh. I'm thinking of a... Gary! That's what it was. Gary! Gary! My ass out. Oh shit! I was joking. Ow! It was a joke. Fucking nerds. <laughs> they laugh at my ignorance. Did a frightful hurt. I don't know why, but I was thinking monster. Does my health just heal normally, anyways? I had to be in the light to be healed. Yeah, whatever. Okay, we can die. no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Motherfucker. No.
bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. See, I like that writing I feel like was fun. That's, that's some decent shit. But like, that other fairy script bullshit he was writing for his house, that was terrible. But maybe that was because that was when he was on his, uh, like, as he was going into his writer's block bullshit. That would be why it was so bad. At least I think it was bad, but that's just my personal opinion. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. Sounds like an asshole. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. So I can shoot people in the world. Ow! Motherfucker! Damn it. I anticipated badly. Cost me a dime. <laughs> oh, yeah, main school page. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Oh. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. It actually does go down there. Cool. Like that's actually solid ground down there. Ah, you never know. It's like, oh, well, we didn't program it to go down there, so why would he have it be solid, you know? Hello. The 
darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy, I'm stuck. Oh, I'm stuck behind it. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, I'm so dead. We'll find a car from there. that was pursuing me was growing stronger and it was taking over everything in its time. Christ. We'll find a car from there. God damn it. I'll try a flashback. I feel like flashback is a little bit long because it's in the wrong room. Excuse me. That wow, was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was getting closer. Eager flashlight. You know what that means? Bigger light. Fucking everything. Cause I'm a fucking hoarder. Schumann. Geek fucking. Damn. Would you fuck off? That's all.
Fucker! Why is a blue guy? Like, Get past me! existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful. Until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durleth. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, um, uh, I... Mm. <laughs> Also, that's some Cthulhu uh, Lovecraftian bullshit right there. The darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Ow!
is the upper limit of flares here? 20? How many flares can I hold? That was a terrible story. I... I had never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. 